Three months ago, I made the switch from iOS to Android. And despite living in the Apple ecosystem for so long, I've been pretty happy with the switch. Having said that, there are still a few iOS features that I do miss. The first is clipboard continuity. It's a minor thing, but the ability to copy text from your phone to your computer or vice versa is something I really missed when I first switched to Android. Fortunately, the app Alt-C uses cloud messaging and SSL to create a universal clipboard that can be used between an Android phone and a PC or Mac. There are several Chrome-based extensions that also enable this feature, but I quite like Alt-C because the apps run independent of the web browser. Additionally, if you enable the auto launch feature within the Android app settings, texts like phone numbers, map coordinates, web and email addresses will be automatically launched when copied from the computer to your phone's clipboard, taking the convenience of a universal clipboard really to the next level. The only real drawback is that, as the name alludes, you can't overwrite the default system copy-paste hotkeys on your computer. Instead, you have to choose another copy-paste combination like Alt-C and Alt-V. The second feature I miss is AirDrop. I never relied solely on AirDrop to transfer files within the Apple ecosystem, but you can't deny that it's super convenient. The Android alternative that I use is called Send Anywhere. Though not as streamlined as AirDrop, this free app categorizes your phone contents by file type and allows you to send and receive files a few different ways. Using a link or selecting a nearby device encrypts the file and uploads it to a server for transfer, where it will expire after 48 hours. Alternatively, the unique code method transfers files directly between devices and the codes expire after 9 minutes. Overall, Send Anywhere has worked well on the few occasions when I needed to use wireless transfer. I also miss iOS's background foreground audio handling. iOS does a very good job of distinguishing between music playing in the background on an app like Spotify and the foreground sounds coming from a game or other app, allowing you to mute the foreground app while continuing to listen to music. Unfortunately, One UI just lumps all of these together by default as media. You could go into the settings of each game and mute the sound effects, but if you want more refined control, I quite like the Sound Assistant app that works on Samsung Galaxy phones. It allows you to change the volume of each app independently using a floating button that appears briefly after pressing the volume keys. Additional features allow you to set up scheduled volume controls for certain times of day, or only play sound from a specific app through your headphones or other connected devices. Overall, Sound Assistant is a very useful app if you're in the Samsung Galaxy ecosystem. The fourth iOS feature I really miss is quick scrolling. Being able to jump to the top of a page by tapping the upper edge of the screen is something I used all the time in iOS, and really missed when I first transferred over to Android. But, if you're willing to shell out about $2 for the Edge Gestures app, there is a workaround. Using the app, you can customize how the side and bottom edges of your screen will respond to gestures like tap, swipe, and multi-tap. I set both the left and right edges to scroll to the start of the page in response to a single tap, and it works pretty well. It won't get you all the way back to the top of a long Twitter feed, but fortunately with Twitter, you can just re-tap the home icon to jump to the top. It's rare I recommend apps that you have to pay for, but Edge Gestures is definitely worth checking out. The quick scroll feature is really just scratching the surface of its gesture and app launching capabilities. Finally, I really miss Reader View in Safari. It's great for cutting through integrated ads to declutter your web reading experience. To recreate this on Android, I use a Chrome flag called Reader Mode Triggering to detect if the web page is an article and present me with the option of showing a simplified viewer to cut through most of the mess. Additionally, you can alter the text size and switch between light, dark, or sepia coloring. To enable it, just go to chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags in the Chrome app, then search for Reader Mode and enable the flag as you see fit. It's worth noting that Chrome flags are experimental, so use them at your own risk, but I use several to create a more comfortable interface. If you want to see a video showing the ones I use most, please let me know in the comments below. And that's it! If you're making the switch to Android, I hope these suggestions help. If you have any others that you know of, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, please like this video if you found it useful, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.